Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm gonna review a guitar that's slightly more expensive. I usually do the super, super cheap ones, but this is slightly more expensive. I want, it's basically for me to find out, is it really worth the money to pay a little extra? Well, let's see uh, what my opinion is. Uh, it's a PRS uh, Custom 24 uh, SC. Custom 24, it's their uh, overseas brand made in Korea. And uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, PRS has, has actually managed to make a new uh, standard model in the guitar world. And uh, it's they brilliantly, uh, Paul Reed Smith did it brilliantly by uh, taking the two standards and putting them together. So it's basically a uh, strat body but with uh, less Paul uh, materials and the scale length is right between a Strat and a Les Paul so it's like a mixture of everything and it has a tremolo like a Strat. Yeah he took pieces from both of the big standards ones and yeah it became a success. Okay, uh, it's what is it made of? It's made of uh, mahogany, a lot of it. Uh, the neck and the body, it's mahogany. And uh, uh, the, it has a rosewood fingerboard and the maple top with a flame maple veneer on top of that. So it's like a plywood guitar. <laughs> what do you know? Um, I suppose it's thinner. I haven't really played that many regular PRS guitar. I, s I would assume that it's thinner than the regular ones. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of slim and the neck is rather slim as well. It reminds me of, I don't know, Ibanez guitars maybe. It's a very, this is the wide, thin version. It's, yeah, it's thinner, right? Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pre RS's branded uh, tuners, probably made in Far East as well. They work fine. They have this nut, and this I've seen on a lot of PRS guitars. It's, it's so thick. Why is it like this? Um, it's probably made of graphite uh, or something like that, something that's self-lubricating, but having a nut that's this this thick and it could have been half the size basically and that would take away a lot of the friction because what happens when you use this tremolo which is a nice one by the way it's a version of the standard strut tremolo but you get to adjust the tension of the arm and the six screws aren't like regular wood screws it's actually it actually pivots on them like on a two-point tremolo here we have six points but what i find is when you use it it actually goes out of tune it doesn't stay in tune that well and uh, i don't think the tremolo is the problem because that seems very sol solid and really good and they have done this thing of having the strings going kind of straight over the not it's not perfect on this one uh it's more perfect on the american ones but having the not being this big adds friction and it's a bad design and yeah what else we have a volume tone and this is a push pull for call tapping three-way switch that's it i gave it a seven for materials and hardware build quality durability well it's it feels very solid. It has a when you pick it up and play it, it feels solid. There's something they do about it that makes it feel I don't know, like one piece of wood or something. I don't know. It feels well put together. And uh, is it perfect? Because uh, this po costs a lot more. It costs me. Yeah, it costs more than uh, some American-made Gibson guitars. Uh, 
Is it perfect? No, it isn't perfect. Uh, the finish, for instance, the, this uh, scraped binding, instead of having a binding, they just reveal the maple on the side. It's not even, it's not straight, uh, the edges aren't perfect. Uh, and that is almost something you would expect from like a cheap Epiphone guitar, but this is a much more expensive guitar, so... I would expect it to be a lot better. <coughs> Other than that, it's it's great. It's a very good guitar. Uh, other than that, uh, build-wise. So I gave it an 8 for build quality and durability. Again, we have a mahogany neck and uh, a very thin one and this headstock. Even if the angle is not as steep as on the Gibson guitars, you... I'm sure this will break if you use this as your touring guitar and you yeah, end up l putting it on the floor or something, yeah. It's a big risk, it will break. Playability, well, yeah, the neck is great, it's very slim, it's very fast and uh, the frets are great. They are rather, f I don't know, they are low in profile but wide, so it's, I don't know, for me it feels easy to get around them. Um, 24 frets, it's in the name, custom 24, and it's easy to reach. I don't know why they have this piece of wood here. I remember Ed Broman used to complain about this one, he even made, uh, they could have even send guitars to him to m take away this one. This is, looks the same on most PRS American guitars. Actually, they have made a new one called a Pat and Regan or something, where they remove this. I don't know. In in theory, it could be good for tone because the more wood you have in the where the body joins the neck, the bear. But it could be in the way for someone. It isn't for me. I find it easy to get up to high frets. So playability, I gave it an eight. Electronics. Well, we have the same problem as with uh, the Yamaha Pacifica guitar I did. That the Volume control and the three-way switch, no problem. But the tone knob seems rather loose, and especially since it's a push-pull, it feels, I don't know. It's a complete different feel from the volume knob, and doesn't seem too reliable, I don't know. I'll give it a seven for electronics. Okay, let's hear it then, and I'll start with a clean sound.
uh, yeah, it has the uh, uh, versions, Korean-made versions of the American pickup. So it's like a, a HFS hot fat scream. I think that stands for, and a vintage bass. And I used the coil tap there, so you can hear the difference. Um, okay, let's do some overdrive. <laughs> Finally, a uh, high gain sound. I gave it an 8 for sounds. It sounds very good. The pickups are very good. Um, and suit the guitar, I think. Yeah. And you can get all kinds of sounds, as you heard. I did the, the call tap and everything. And, and it, it, I don't know, it's a very convincing call tap sound. It does sound like a single coil, so they are doing that right. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. 7.6 altogether. Um, so back to my question, is it worth the extra money to buy, uh, I mean, go from a Squire guitar maybe to this one or an Epiphone? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure, actually. Um, this is much more ready to go. Uh, you don't have to really do any pickup uh, upgrades or anything like that. 
Um, but if you buy a cheaper uh, Squire Epiphone guitar and uh, change the pickups, you will end up with a guitar or an Ibanez, for instance, uh, guitar and change the pickups. You'll end up with a guitar that's probably better than this one. And um, Well then, it's not an easy question to answer. Uh, I hope you found this useful anyway. Um, this has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd reviewing the PRS SE Custom 24. See you soon.